Okay, I'm gonna start replacing everything. Um, do the tie rods and do this cotter pin and castle nut. Uh, I already loosened the axle nut. Okay. Um, I'm gonna also do the strut and sway bar link here and there. Um, and uh, next, I have to undo this brake hose and ABS wiring. Um, and then finally the controller. So this looks straight. But we're gonna replace it anyways. Plus the boots are kinda getting tired a little bit in a few spots. We have a new one we're gonna install, but first we're gonna remove this strut assembly. So a lot of the comp a lot of these components are probably okay. Like this strut assembly is probably okay. I don't think it's like really bent or damaged. Uh, but you know, uh, we just decided to replace uh, all of these parts, you know, um, yeah, but uh, in my opinion, you know, the strut is okay, the sway bar link is okay, but hey, they told me to replace everything, so we're replacing everything. Um, that's the plan. Alright, so I gotta, I had to lift this uh, wiper cowl to get to these uh, strut nuts on top. It's just too much plastic everywhere. Look at all this plastic everywhere, huh? You think it's necessary? So yeah, I got it. I already removed one nut. I have two more to go, and then we're gonna go on the bottom, undo those bottom bolts right there, and the strut will come out. Finally, uh, I think it's a good thing we're replacing it. I see the problem, it's already leaking. Okay, and okay, now there's the axle one more time. Got chewed up here. Now we're gonna go ahead and take this axle out and then work on our lower controller. So I gotta pry and don't worry, these are not under tension. Okay, I have it supported right there. So this thing is out. It's pretty bad. Bushings. Look at that. So now the main concern I have is I hope this subframe is good. I hope it's. I hope I'll be able to bolt up the lower control arm. This system got bent pretty bad. This is crazy. So hopefully everything is good. I have a new control arm. Let's try to install it. Here's the new control arm, okay. I'm gonna try to install it right now. Hopefully everything is good. If not, that will really suck. That means that we'll have to replace the front subframe on this car. Okay. Hey, even though it's Washington State and not much snow or salt, 
we're still gonna put grease on these to prevent any uh, seizures in the future. All right, quick update. This is on the ground now, and the wires are still good. There's no tension on them. Okay, so we're good there. Um, and control arm is in. I'm not bolting up. I'm not uh, tightening the bolts yet. I have to tighten them when the car is on the ground. Otherwise, I'm gonna cause premature wear in the bushings. Okay. Um, right now, I got this axle out. I'm gonna remove it from the transmission and take it out. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's possible that the axle is okay, but I just um, we're just gonna replace it. Okay. It's got wear right there. It's so I don't wanna you know do this job twice. So we're gonna replace it. Ah, oh, what a crazy day. So, you know, you think that, oh, the job is easy and everything, you will be done in like an hour. But guess what? It never works out that way. Um, I'll show you what I ran into. I had a problem uh, popping out the axle from the transmission side. Uh, it was really stubborn. It didn't want to do, uh, it, w it didn't want to go anywhere. Um, so yeah, I was struggling for like literally maybe f another extra 40 minutes uh, trying to take the axle out. And as you guys know, I never give up. Uh, so I just kept going, kept, uh, kept, you know, kind of like, I, I'll show you. I actually had to remove the transmission mount. Um, that looks like a dog bone. Uh, I'll show you in a second. Uh, but yeah, uh, it finally popped out. Mm, and I do know that they actually sell the axle like some sometimes the axle gets stuck inside the transmission But they sell those kind of like a slide hammer uh, types of tools uh, with with two jaws that you can actually attach to the back of the uh, Axle joint you can just like with a slide hammer you can just like pop it out, you know uh, So yeah, anyways, let me show you where I'm at So I had to remove the splash shield on this thing and I'll show you. I sprayed some PB blaster in there, okay? But this is this is the dog bone that I had to take off. It was literally in here, so that came out. And you don't really have to support the transmission, but it's a good idea. Right now, it just wobbles back and forth, but it's still supported. But here's the axle. So this dog bone was in the way, so it was hard for me to actually uh, pry in there, but finally the axle is out. I actually sprayed some PB blaster in there. And uh, who knows, maybe the PB blaster did the trick, but I finally popped it out. Um, and let me finish this, pulling it out. There she is. Okay. But yeah, there's a little bit of a pain. Okay. All right, there's the axle. This ring, actually it's a good idea when you install a new axle to put some lubricant in here or like a grease. That way it doesn't get seized out. Because right now it's kind of dry and a little rusty in there. That's why it was difficult to remove, you know, so. All right, the axle is finally out. Now we're gonna grab the new axle and compare them, make sure they're all the same, make sure we have the ABS ring on the new axle. So, here's the new axle. They appear to be the same, except this one has some kind of, like a, I don't know what this plastic ring, but the main thing is it has the ABS ring, and the new axle doesn't have this metal part. Okay, which I'm assuming is like a protection when, in case like an accident like this happens, maybe. Other than that, I mean they're they're pretty much the same. All right, added lots of grease here, so it can be removed easily in the future, and I'm about to install it. Strut is partially installed as well. All right, 
right, so everything's pretty much back. Brake line is reattached and uh, ABS line, new sway bar link, everything all tight, okay. Uh, axle, all right. Um, I'll just jump into replacing the outer tie rod and probably the inner tie rod because it's bent, I'm pretty sure. Um, so we'll do that. And right now uh, the car uh, is lifted in the front. So, or you, if you want, you can put it in neutral, but uh, both of my wheels are off the ground. So I can turn this and just check to make sure everything is good. Everything is turning properly. Yeah, everything is good besides some brake noise. Okay. And obviously I'm gonna recommend replacing uh, front brake pads and probably rotors on this car. So we'll see if he wants to do it, I'll definitely go ahead and do it today. Um, yeah. Now it's time to reinstall our best friend. This mount. Like so. All right, now it's time to uh, lower this jack and install the splash shield. There you go. All right, splash shield is back. We're almost done, guys. So I decided that we're not gonna change this inner tie rod because it's still good. Um, and it functions as it should and there's no play. Uh, it's not bent, it looks pretty good. So we'll save this one, uh, plus that it's a factory and uh, it's still good. It's still gonna be good for quite a while. So uh, we'll just install uh, a new outer tie rod. Um, but we'll leave the inner tie rod in place. Um, and other than that, we're pretty much all ready to go. Everything is bolted up, uh, strut, uh, except that control arm still needs to be on the tie right there once the car is on the ground. The ball joint is all tightened up, axle, um, sway bar link. I mean, everything is back together, okay? So I'm all done with the repairs on that side, except for I wanted to <laughs> install the spare tire on it. Okay, because this is not good. It's not even holding air anymore. That's pretty unsafe. Um, and when I went to open the trunk and I tried to look for the uh, spare tire, here's what I get. <laughs> Surprise! No spare tire! Uh, I only get this uh, tire filler, which I don't think is gonna work. Uh, our wheel is damaged and stuff, but that's crazy. I mean, I understand they, they try to uh, save on weight, but man, you know, it's crazy. So I'm gonna have to put this back on. I don't know how he's gonna drive back, but yeah. And he told me that, you know, he can't, due to financial reasons, he can't replace this right now. Um, so that really sucks. And uh, he has to take this car to an alignment shop. So they're not gonna do an alignment probably with this kind of tire because you, you're supposed to have all tires filled up with air completely and uh, uh, yeah, so this kind of sucks. Yeah, I mean, here's my car. <laughs> and we do have a full spare tire. Okay, I'm not gonna show it to you right now. It's underneath there, but 
you know these new cars they they don't have anything at all <laughs> they're so cheaply made that it's just it's sad you know it's just sad let's just hope that this uh cigarette lighter works let's see if it does Oop, i'm brand new where's the button yeah it's working i can fill it up with air You guys like my one hand camera man? Yeah, that's how I was starting YouTube with Oh come on. Oh it's at 40. Well we'll add uh, maybe like five more PSI. I gotta tell you this man is lucky. Uh, as you can see the wheel is back together it's all good <laughs> now you can steer you can drive um, I thought it was gonna be worse I thought that uh, subframe, subframe was gonna be trashed but uh, he is lucky uh, not in his case so good news all right well uh, repair is not a repair without a test drive so we're about to go ahead and test drive this Hyundai Elantra Okay, let's see Ooh, So unusual sitting here I'm So used into like I'm so used to old-school cars that yeah, it's just 57,000 miles Okay Seat belt. Okay, our brake light is on because we have the parking brake set. Parking brake off. Oh, at least that's good. At least they still have that manual parking brake, which I love. I hate the new uh, electric parking brakes. What the heck? Are you really that lazy? All right. First test drive. Let me open the window. Just make sure slowly. Okay. She's going, she's going, she's going, take it slow, first turn, okay, let's open the window, another one, yeah. okay, she's rolling, she's rolling, okay, a little faster, Make sure no noises, everything's good. Yeah, so far so good. Look at this old school car. I think this is old school Toyota Corolla or something. I really like it. That thing is sexy. All right, let's just drive this. So far so good. It's doing great, it's driving. And I think I got the alignment pretty close too. But I will still tell him to go and get it aligned. Ooh, power! I was gonna say VTEC kicked in, but it's not a Honda. <laughs> Ooh. Stop, fully stop. So we don't get pulled over and have them tell us, oh, you didn't fully stop. Right, oh, she's doing great. 40 miles an hour. Oh, that's perfect. She's doing pretty good. Brakes are good, even though they need to be replaced, but they still feel good. All right, so I'm back from a test drive. Everything felt great during the test drive, it means we did everything correctly and anyways i'm about to call the owner tell them the car is ready so he can pick it up and thank you so much for watching this video and thank you for your support don't forget to like this video and check out my other videos and playlists that i have on this channel i'll see you in the next one take care